grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Today, the church celebrates the feast of Pastor Andrews, a Anglican and Jacobean bishop, spiritual writer, teacher of the faith. We give thanks for his writing and we give thanks for his example, his prayers, and his fellowship within the communion of God's saints. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom their secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your hidden name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. To prepare ourselves to welcome the Lord coming in word and sacrament. Let us bring to the Lord our sins and weakness and ask for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the wounds of sin and division. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, who gave to Lancelot Andrew his many gifts of your Holy Spirit, making him a man of prayer and a pastor of your people, perfect in us that which is lacking in your gifts, of faith to increase it, of hope to establish it, of love to kindle it, that we may live in the light of your grace and glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. This is the word of the Lord. The response to verses of the 63rd Psalm, I will bless you, O God, as long as I live. I will bless you, O God, as long as I live. O oh God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you, my flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. 
So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you, O God, as long as I live. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips, when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. I will bless you, O God, as long as I live. Alleluia, alleluia, you are the light of the world. No one after lighting a lamp could sit under a basket, but on a lampstand, where it gives light to all. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we keep the feast of Lancelot Andrews, Elizabethan, Jacobean. In the royal palace of Finsbor, outside Copenhagen, the chapel has a pulpit adorned with not one, nor yet two, but three hourglasses. And that's very much what Lancelot Andrews would have expected. Perhaps his most famous writing, even more famous than the Preces Privatae, the private plans that were published posthumously, was his sermon of 1662 at Christmas. And if that weren't a three hour, nothing was. He had had a distinguished career to be preacher to the king at Christmas. He had been master of Pembroke under Queen Elizabeth, Pembroke of St Paul's, Dean of Westminster, refused preferment to bishoprics. And then under James I he was successively appointed as Bishop of Chichester, which probably never was enthroned at, of Ely, of Winchester. He was one of the leading lights of the Hampton Court Conference of 1604, which gave rise to the authorised version, and indeed he translated himself most of the first five books, the Pentateuch and the historical books. He was a man of great achievement. And as a bishop and a theologian, we know him particularly as one of those Elizabethan and Jacobean divines who steered a course between the extremes of Rome and Geneva, of Roman Catholicism and of Puritanism. The Anglican middle way is not simply let's compromise on everything. It is a distinct path between as it were, Scylla and Charybdis, between the extremes. And that path, Andrews and his friends and contemporaries believed, had to be based not just on Holy Scripture, but also on reason, and also on a deep awareness of the Church's traditional faith. Those long sermons were full of wordplays, of Greek and Latin quotations, very detailed textual analysis. They were carefully thought through and they were well aware of what Christians had believed from the days of the Fathers on it. And so it should come as no surprise that Andrew's spirituality 
was deeply Eucharistic, deeply Catholic in the universal rather than the particular sense. It was by the standards of his day very high. He mixed the wine with water in the chalice, there were candles on the altar of his chapel and he used incense in it. And that Eucharistic focus on the glory of God in his self-giving in bread and wine was what he focused on in part in that sermon with which we started in 1622 at Christmas. The Magi's the Magi drew near, and Andrews reminded his hearers that one of the traditional decorations of Ombres, in which the reserved sacrament is kept, was the star of the Magi, encouraging the faithful to draw near with faith. Andrews talks of the Eucharist in the context of the Magi's coming to Jesus. This, our nearest coming, that here we can come, till we shall by another coming come unto him in his heavenly kingdom. To which Jesus with the Father and the Holy Spirit, the endless universal worship. Amen. Our intentions today are for the Diocese of Ely and Winchester. On this commemoration of St. Sergei of Ramnesh, for the Church in Russia, with others in our communion, the Bishop, clergy and people of the American Diocese of Southeast Florida, and with others in our diocese, for Martin, our bishop, for William and Ruth, the Suffolkans, for the parishes of Tangmere and Ovin, for Father Trevor Marshall and all who worship in those places. They are for peace and for justice, wherever there is strife and oppression. In our own parish, they are particularly on his birthday for Chris Hunt, and we pray for those in need, for those persecuted for the faith, for those infected in and affected by the pandemic, for all who serve their needs of body, mind and spirit. For those afflicted by natural disaster and accident. For Paul Cloak, Elaine Fletcher, Edward Pinkney, Andrew Hollands, Aubrey Barnard, Janet Bedford, Rosalind Upton, Susan Vine, John Stevens, Philip Gorman, Lauren Greer, and Lindsay Murray. As also today, Pat Walton and Sheila Ward. And they are for the faithful departed. That with Lancelot Andrews and all the saints, they may rejoice in that nearer coming to your presence. We pray for Maurice Clark, priest, Gerald Garber, priest, and on his ears mine for David Bank. And having offered our intentions, we make our prayer for ourselves on this feast in a prayer of Lancelot Andrews. Give me the girdle, the helmet, the breastplate, the shield, the swords, the shoes, over all prayer. Grant me the power and the opportunity of well-doing, that before the day of my decease I may at all adventure effect some good thing whereof the fruit may remain, that I may be able to appear with righteousness and be satisfied with glory. Thou which didst add fifteen years to the life of Ezekiel, grant so much space of life at the least unto such a measure, that I may be able therein to deplore my sins, and grant me a good end, what is above every gift, a good and holy end of life, 
the glorious and joyful resurrection. Amen. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather our departments under your table, but you are the same Lord, and his nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, <coughs> so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. God of truth, accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and grant that through these holy gifts we may come to share in the wisdom of your eternal word, who makes himself known in the breaking of the bread, even Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right, so to do. It is truly right and good, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he has named his church the salt of the earth and light of the world, a city set on a hill which cannot be hidden. Within this faithful company, your servant, Lancelot Andrews, became a learned teacher through the gifts of the Holy Spirit of Christ, that all might welcome his teaching as your gift, a beacon on the path of holiness that leads to eternal life. As now we celebrate his memory, we join with angels and archangels and all who have served you on earth and worship you now in heaven to raise our voices and proclaim your glory ever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his commands, send your Holy Spirit that this bread, broken and wine unpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we offer with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Mary the Virgin, St. George the Great Martyr, with Lancelot Andrews and with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only to say the word, and I shall be healed. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Take and eat this in remembrance that he died and rose again for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. God of truth, whose wisdom served her table and invited us to eat the bread and drink the wine of the kingdom, help us to lay aside all foolishness and live and walk in the way of insight, that we may come with Lancelot Andrews to the eternal feast of heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. God give you grace to follow his sins in faith and hope and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain always. Amen. Go in peace, to love and to serve the Lord.